Good morning, everyone. This is Julie McDonald with Microcom Technologies, and I'd like to thank all of you for attending today's webinar with Netgear. Today's host is our very good friend, Jordan Cooper. He is the Senior Account Manager for Texas, California, and Hawaii. He'll be presenting today, and if anyone has any questions, question box and Jordan will be able to answer them at the end of today's presentation. Thank you, Jordan, so much for being with us today. We greatly appreciate it. Looking forward to what you have to share with us. I am finished for now. Please go ahead and take it on over. All right, champ. Thanks so much, Julie. Hey, good morning, good afternoon for everybody out there watching. Appreciate your time coming together and learning more about Netgear. Uh, right off the bat, yep, I'm an account manager. so. If you attend my presentations before, hopefully have welcome back. If not, welcome to your first one. Uh, I'm no engineer, but I uh, definitely know enough to be dangerous. Definitely know enough to get me into some hot water. So I want to preface that right out the gate. So as that way, as you ask questions, just keep that in the back of your mind that there might be some things that I may or may not always have an answer to, but I'll always try my best to answer as best as I can. So today I'm going to be talking about something that we've kind of talked. I've done a, a few presentations before in the past, and I kind of wanted to talk about the merging uh, technologies and, and what's coming new and how it really fits into Netgear. And so you know, Netgear has this uh, coined this phrase, the total network solution, right? offering things from routing uh, to LTE backups to switching and then to uh, access points and wireless deployments. Right? The entire network that you would need, Netgear has a solution for. And with this network solution, we have our Wi-Fi 7 that goes right in hand with it. And we'll talk about the Wi-Fi 7 products that we have and kind of overview some of the competitors and features and pricings, and then where this all applies to and where all this goes to. So let's talk a little bit for about uh, the Wi-Fi 7. First off, uh, right off the bat, when it comes time to Netgear, you know, why? Why choose Netgear? Or what makes Netgear different? Or a little bit about Netgear's business products and our business solutions is first off scalability. I think that's a big one for for MSPs. If you're an MSP, or even if you're somebody who's a do-it-yourselfer and you have your own uh, business and you're managing multiple locations, right? Netgear offers scalability with our multi-tenancy and multi-location. Uh, these are going to be unlike. Right? Uh, some of our competitors have this and some of them don't and those that do we do it differently and we provide it making it an easier way to take care of multiple sites and and many of the clients that you may or may have next thing is going to be the cloud management across all devices in a complete network right? so we have it in the router the switch the ap we even have it on the lte backup that we have our, our cloud management our cloud management or the uh the controller is actually built onto the device, onto the router, to the switch, or to the AP. So then because of that, we don't need any third-party hardware, or we don't need a, a cloud key, or a, you know something like that. Like these will just directly work right straight to the cloud. And with this cloud management called Insight, hopefully you've seen that uh, presentation on it. If uh, you're hearing about Insight for the first time go definitely check it out. We might touch a little bit based on it today, but check it out. It's a great way to monitor, configure, troubleshoot, set up VLANs, and, and everything that you would want to be able to do on a network. You have the ability to do so remotely at a very affordable price. Another thing about Netgear is we're secured with separate networks, right? eight SSIDs per location and up to 200 APs and 4,000 clients. Right? But let's be practical there. Uh, not very many of us are gonna be Having that uh, that that large scale, uh, and who wants to go with uh, Netgear? Usually the enterprise people. We can leave up to the enterprise companies out there, but uh, in theory, Netgear absolutely can fit, and we do often fit those those medium to enterprise grade companies, especially those enterprise companies who maybe have a, a smaller budget, right? They they want the wine on a beer budget, as we call it. Netgear fits great. Netgear also offers high speed with low latency networks. Theoretically. This is the theoretical throughput, right? 18.4 gigabytes per second of throughput with low latency with the multi-link operation, which is a feature of Wi-Fi 7, which makes it so awesome and so quick and so fast. If you don't know what that is, the multi-link operation basically is, is takes multiple uh, channels and being able to 
uh, combine them, right? Before, if you were on the 2.4 or the 5 or the 6, these bands now actually can also combine them, essentially. And your devices will switch from band to band or, or you know, or, or uh, combine the bands to, to make more faster throughput, which is what's super awesome and fantastic about Wi-Fi 7, really, really game-changing. Of course, we do the fast roaming, aka fast leave. Some people know it. Some people also call it meshing, right? the Wi-Fi mesh. So as you walk throughout the building, you can uh, stay on the network. We have the latest security authentication, WPA3 security, which just involves the latest Wi-Fi 6, the 6-band. Six That's the, uh, the latest security authentication. Other kind of stuff too, always on the network. So that dual WAN failover that I was talking to you about, that uh, we have that LTE backup. And that goes great with our router. Our router has that dual WAN capability. So that's what we've got there. So you can make sure your network is always up and always running. And then of course our pre and pro cell support, right? We got a design team, a pro Wi-Fi design team that's super awesome. Uh, we got industry leading warranties. Most of our products is gonna have a five year limited lifetime warranty, which means after it goes end of life, which we try to do after about five to seven years is when we try to end of life our product aside from outside the factors that may may, or, uh, may not affect that. But once it does go end of life, you get an additional five years of support outside of the end of life date. So in theory, you could have anywhere from 10 to 12 years if you bought a switch that just recently came out, or uh, you know you could have up to 12 years. So super great to see there. Now let's kind of talk about the competitive feature and, and kind of doing a pricing analysis on a comparative scale, because I think you know, that's kind of where the bulk of the questions comes. How do we compare to a few others out there? So you're going to see some brands that we recognize. And this is just information that we just kind of pulled from the uh, the web. And and so take the pricing for what it is. Obviously, if you're a dealer or something like that, pricing may be alternative. And, and obviously, this is MSRP pricing. So don't take this as, uh, as gospel that this is going to be the price. Obviously, with buying through somebody like Microcom, they're super great and super awesome with their, with their pricing. So extend that your way. And I'm going to apologize right now kind of in advance as I, I, I created a slideshow um, where we could highlight. So I'm going to click on these and it's kind of still a little funky. So if it repeats itself, I, I apologize in advance. I'm still, this is a new uh, a new feature that I just recently learned. So, but anyway, as we, we talk about here, obviously we're going to be comparing Netgear's uh, high end and low end of our Wi-Fi 7 access point to TP-Link's high end and low end, Ubiquities, Zizel, and Ruckus. And those are pretty much the really common. Those are all common names that we see throughout that we feel we we uh, go kind of head to head with, if you will. Um, first thing uh, we can maybe point out MSRP pricing, um, right? We're obviously here. We're we're not the cheapest. Right? We are not the cheapest out there. Nor do I think we want to be the cheapest. And I think people associate and know that hey, if it's cheap, what what's lacking? What am I missing? What is why is it cheap? It's cheap for a reason. And uh, they start to kind of ask those questions. And of course, I don't think you want to also be the, the most expensive, right? Like Ruckus. You'll see here, we don't want to be that most expensive because then people will feel, hey, maybe I'm overpaying for a product that uh, could be something better out there. So Nick here, we like to try to point ourselves like right in that center, right in that Goldilocks zone, a good, better, best type solution, if you will. A good price point, better price point, and a best price point. Um, Nick here feels, we feel in that, that, good, that good zone right there. And we all offer pretty much similar speed grades with the BE, that's uh, BE Wi-Fi 7. That's what the BE stands for. And this is the theoretical throughput. So this is the 18,400 or 18.4 gigabytes. You'll notice that this is double this. If you'll notice it because, and the reason is, is because as we get down to here talking, this is a two by two on all the bands. This is a four by four on all these bands on the radios. Uh, you'll notice too that this is just a little bit bigger, but not by much, not by much bigger. Than, uh, than what we have on the on the little brother here. As we look, all of these are gonna be form factor to be ceiling or wall mounted. Take a look at the ethernet port here as well. 10 gig, this is a 10 gig port ethernet port that takes PoE++, this is a bad boy guys, it takes a good amount of power. It takes I think I believe somewhere in the ballpark of 40 watts of power to power this thing. Super, uh, super amazing, super big, super powerful. It's definitely going to be future proofing for probably maybe even the next 10 years with this with this guy. That's why we put a 10 gig nick on it on the on the back. You know, you're really going to be able to utilize the speed. So this is going to be uh, PoE plus. This I want to say takes uh, uh, it 
takes about uh, 20, no, no, it's like 35 watts of PoE power. Oh, sorry. Um, so yeah, so that's that's kind of one thing Sam's selling. <laughs> there, let's see, there we go. Um, another kind of thing, we obviously the SSIDs, eight SSIDs with 24 total. That's gonna be eight on each band. Client devices support, right? When we see our client devices support, we've got 600 here in 384. Ubiquity and, and, and ruckus, you know, we're kind of right there a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Again, we're that mediums medium zone where we want to be. And then, of course, here's our, our warranty on these. Our while our switches are going to have that limited lifetime warranty, our uh, routers are still going to have just a standard five-year warranty. This does also have the ability to use a power adapter. Power adapter is not necessarily included, so that's why it says no. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's no way to be included with that. Um, it can be powered via PoE or via the power adapter. So that's kind of just a good overview of kind of how we kind of compare, right, to to others out there. Um, I think the previous slide. Let me see if I can go back because this is this is the one that I want to compare to. This is the 70, 750. This is the big bad boy in a comparison to uh, all the others, to Ubiquities, to Zyxel, to Ruckus, even Fortinet. Now on here we. I, I, Decided we maybe want to throw in Fortinet on there because that was another one that I, I got some good feedback from this last presentation that I gave uh, Fortinet. But uh, as you can see, when you're dealing with this kind of throughput, it just makes sense when you're dealing with you know, five gigs on this, or you know, even eight eight gigs on this to throw a two and a half gig. Nick is really bottlenecking, and so ten gig is definitely the the, the way to go on this route. Um, Again, 600 devices, are we the most? Nope. Are we the less? Are we the least? Nope. We're just that good, happy medium right there. And again, there's two of them. The WBE 750, which is the previous one. This is the WBE 710. So depending on price cost, right? you're looking at 349, uh, 99 is MSRP on this one, and then 699, 99 MSRP for this one. So depending on the price point, if you have a price conscious uh, end user or you're, you're just looking maybe to still adopt Wi-Fi 7 but don't want to pay that the high price, uh, definitely look at those options. Carrying on, let's talk about the uh, the applications to this and, and how this all applies. When it comes time to our router, right? This is our router name, PR60X. So to talk about this router, you'll see here, I'll talk a little bit about this. This this is the Wi-Fi router that has, we have one fiber port, one copper port, and then we've got four LAN ports here. If you'll notice here, this these are actually a WAN and a LAN port. These two are WAN and a LAN. And uh, this is where the dual WAN comes over. If you can see, it might be a little bit hard to see, but this is half, uh, half white, half orange, meaning it can it's a WAN and a LAN, meaning that it can do both. It can be configured if you need an additional LAN port can also be configured if you want it to be a WAN port for failover. And then you can com configure the switch to tell it, or the, the router to tell it, hey, if you detect a failover, uh, automatically switch over. This port here is going to be your 10 gig, and then this port here, all these ports are going to be 2.5 gig on the LAN side. This pairs, pairs very well and very nicely with kind of this, this core switching here. This is our MS324 TXUP, because this is a super killer switch. You're going to go... 10 gig, this is, you know, hooking up with a 10 gig uh, port on here uh, to a 10 gig here. This is 10 gig uh, on these fibers that uh, you can also buy adapters for to make them copper if you want to, to link. Uh, super awesome. This is ultra PoE or PoE plus plus, if you will, on, on all the ports. So super, super high uh, PoE budget. Very safe, especially for products that as they're coming out as more products are coming out guys tvs lcd displays speakers uh, all this kind of stuff that's coming out uh, we can anticipate having needing poe plus plus or ultra poe so uh, something to kind of think about as you're putting in switches and then uh, this is a multi-gig across all ports with these ports being 10 gig uplinks and then these work great you know if you want to take them directly to some of our access points right the access points that need to be powered via ultra PoE or PoE++ like this one, or if it just needs to be powered via just PoE+, works great. We have access points that do both. Uh, we still have the Wi-Fi 6 stuff that's super popular and still super awesome. We did a presentation on that a little bit ago too, so check out our Wi-Fi 6 stuff if uh, if you haven't yet. That's where we get the term WAX. AX is 6, Wi-Fi 6, and WBE is Wi-Fi 7. And we've also got an outdoor access point, super awesome, 
you'll notice too that these are multi-gig ports. Again, when you're dealing with speeds this fast, it just makes sense to put in a multi-gig port. And then also, you know, if you needed to, this is a, another great switch that we just came up with. This is our GS720 TXP. This is a PoE Plus switch that are one gig ports on all 24 ports with four gig, uh, four, sorry, four uh, 10 gig ports on here. Two of them fiber, two of them copper. So this is a great way, a connection switch, like an edge switch that you can connect to and run via 10 gig backbone, back to the core and back to the router. And then this is great to connect to maybe uh, other edge switches, uh, you know, computers, laptops. Cameras are a big one too. You know, cameras are, are big. When you're talking about a lot of cameras, especially the high quality cameras, they need a one gig port. But if you have you know, a dozen or so cameras, uh, all that definitely needs to, to funnel in and, and, and go through like a 10 gig pipe. Uh, that's, I feel like that's a big mistake that a lot of uh, installers or integrators do. They put in one, a one gig switch and they also put it with one gig backbone. If you have a cameras that are pushing or things that are pushing a lot of that one gig speed, you definitely need something beefing up that power so that that backbone doesn't bottleneck as much as, as, as a one gig would. So definitely think about this switch, super awesome, super great. Uh, and again, all of this, our access points, our switches, our router, I wish I would have put, and maybe I'll put them for the next one, I'll put a little uh, mobile hotspot right here that shows that it can connect for the LTE failover, but all of this is managed, has the option, to be managed remotely via our software called Insight. And you'll see here it does, we do have an app that is on uh, all smartphones, Apple and Android. And then there's a, a website that you go to uh, if you wanna manage it through that way. But uh, all of this is that has that manageability. Now let's take a look here. Sorry guys, as I go here. This just kind of talks about the different use cases, right? There's, uh, this is good for maybe some, some warehouses. This is good for maybe some restaurants, right? If you're gonna be installing maybe in a restaurant, makes sense to go with the seven series on the restaurants. Um, more devices are gonna be connected to it. More likely people are gonna be coming in with newer cell phones or uh, devices that are gonna be having a Wi-Fi 7 card in them. And so it just would make things kind of run better. There's things like large residential homes. This is definitely a, an application for residential homes as well, too. Um, I personally I know that fiber is in my area, and through AT&T, and AT&T Fiber offers up to, right now, 5 gig. Um, and so 10 gig uh, is right around the corner for a lot of people, but uh, you know, you're going to definitely see start seeing multi-gig fiber being more and more common as fiber gets more installed. And so even on residential homes, guys, this is a fantastic application. Now, they may not need necessarily that big 24-port uh, a switch there. This is where like, hey, this 510 TXUP would do fantastic. 10 gig uh, uplink to the router. Uh, you've got ultra PoE to power some of the devices here. And uh, uh, and these devices, obviously, then outdoors, you got a pool, you got a little uh, nice backyard that you want to have. That's that's a fantastic outdoor. Throw those out there and then have that indoor. And again, the, the 7 series is you're going to, assuming if, if it's a large residential home, you know, maybe they've got a a few kids or they've got, they throw a lot of parties. Again, more and more devices are gonna be on Wi-Fi 7 when you have uh, uh, these types of homes and these types of deployments. Now, if you'll notice too, we have a different name. There's a 750 and if you said, hey, I thought it was 750, not 758. 750 are only sold through like an AV distributor. It's just for, it just comes with the four year inset licensing subscription. It's, it's the same thing as if you order the same 750 switch with uh, an insight subscription. It's the same thing. We just bundle this one and, and threw it to the AV side. Small residents, even if it's for small residents as well, um, you know, guys, and that's 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 pretty much all that I, I really have. I mean, there's a couple, maybe last little tidbits of information here would be uh, if you want to look more at, at into these and see the data sheets and get more information on these, you can go to netgear.com slash total, and that'll take you to the total network solutions page. Not very many people know this, and so I always like to make sure that uh, this gets mentioned, but we do have a pro Wi-Fi design service. So this is a free service that Netgears offers for anybody and everybody who wants to uh, design a network, and they're gonna be like, hey, I'm gonna be replacing my, uh, my my access points, I'm gonna refresh my whole network, and I'm gonna be throwing in Wi-Fi. You know, I'm not sure where to start, or you know, how many access points maybe I'm gonna need. Well, I need more because uh, maybe I've expanded or maybe I need less because I'm covering the same feet, square footage, but I'm replacing you know, Wi-Fi 5 and I'm gonna go with seven. 
know, that, that is there some more better coverage with that? Those are good questions to, to ask and that we can help you with this. This email goes to also our, our engineering levels. So this isn't going to some random person. We have a group of about 20 engineers all throughout global, throughout the entire world uh, that have access to this and they will grab it within a couple hours and they'll start working on it for you. They also will do, usually we'll do like a heat map for you. Uh, if you've ever seen a heat map, we use a software called Ekahow. It's a very expensive software. All of our engineers have access to it and that it really helps design uh, and put information in to be as accurate as possible. In fact, I would almost uh, dare to say it's, it's probably about 95% accurate. I say that because there was one time where our engineers was working with an engineer who was on site and uh, they were walking through the entire building and they were seeing the DBs gained and, and what the, uh, uh, you know, how uh, the access point was behaving uh, with our engineers who was looking at it through Ekahel. And as our engineers were saying, hey, if you place it this spot, I'm going to get this type of reading. I'm, this is the DBs that I'm reading. And they're like on site, they're like, yep, I'm getting the exact same thing. Uh, and so they did that through the, the entire building. And it was to the T accurate. Um, so I, I mean, I'm not gonna say 100% because there's, of course, being on site's always always best if you can. But anyway, just a free service. So uh, again, reach out to these guys if you're doing uh, network design, and they'll they'll put the the bomb together, the build of materials, right? Not just on the wireless. They'll say, hey, if you want to throw in, a, if you need a switch to power these access points, here's a great switch that they would recommend. Here you go. Uh, if you need a router, they're going to recommend our, our routers and, and kind of build out this entire solution and tell you what you need. And then once you have it, then you come to a company like Microcom and you go and you say, hey, I know what I need. I went to Netgear. Here's what they told me I need. I'll take it, please. And then they'll make you sure you get some good solid pricing. So uh, guys, I, I appreciate your time. I think that that's about it. Hopefully there's some questions that came in the chat. So Julie, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it back to you to see what questions we've got. Thank you very much, Jordan. I appreciate that wonderful presentation. And as always, I've got some great questions for you from our audience. Uh, let's get started with the first one. Here we go. Are there any new features in Wi-Fi 7 that help mitigate potential vulnerabilities or problems? Uh, you know that's a that's a great question. Um, with Wi-Fi seven, I mean obviously Wi-Fi seven does have some advanced you know securities other than like what I had mentioned the WPA three protocol that strong encryption. Um, you know the uh, I would almost also say the the multi-link operation kind of was saying that that feature. Um, you use a single MAC address across the three radios. When you have, again, that one device is gonna be able to use across all three radios. Uh, so if you have any encryption stuff with the encryption keys, it goes across all devices. Um, you know, and that's probably what I would say as far as, is, is that what I'm aware of, of those three being, uh, or those two being the, the biggest uh, Wi-Fi 7 security protection. Thank you very much, Jordan. Appreciate that. Next question here. How easily can Wi-Fi 7 be integrated with existing network infrastructure for Netgear? Yeah, so all of our stuff will work nicely with, with each other, right? We, we tend to want to make it work. So if you have Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi 6 access points uh, that are Netgear, you know, I know of, uh, especially on our Wi-Fi 6, uh, backwards compatible. So you could throw, let's say that a lot of the area has Wi-Fi 6 access points, but you have an area that maybe a conference room that gets tends to get really bogged down or Wi-Fi kind of sucks in that area because there's a lot of people who go in that conference room and, you know, you just need something a little bit to be able to handle more. Throw in a Wi-Fi 7 and it, it'll still work just fine. It's backwards compatible. The only caveat that I would say too is just make sure on the entire network that uh, wiring is done, right? We don't want to be throwing in Wi-Fi with Wi-Fi 7. We don't want to be throwing in, uh, you know, maybe Cat 5 or cat 5e cabling uh you want at least a minimum of, of, of cat 6 or cat 6a um to be able to, to really get the best use out of it but definitely with netgear it's backwards compatible and we'll work with uh just about everything that netgear has excellent thank you jordan next question here what considerations should be taken into account when designing a wi-fi 7 network it's a great question you know, as I think an MSP, this is 
if you're an MSP, this is a, a definitely a question that you probably hear a lot of or that you try to sell a lot of. First thing that I would consider when you're talking about Wi-Fi 7, Wi-Fi 7 is new. And so you're going to get those people who are like, ooh, it is, it's new, do I, it's, it's expensive, do I, I, I don't need it at this time. Those are all might be accurate statements. Uh, you know, but the one question that I love to ask, and I would encourage you to ask as you're maybe working with your end users, is when you're talking about Wi-Fi 7, and they say, do I really need this? You know, is this something that I really need? Do I really, should I really go with the Wi-Fi 7? The question that you should ask them is, when do you want to be having this conversation again? Right? And what that prefaces is, is it kind of tells them, hey, when do you want to be in the same situation right now where you're having to do a network refresh? When do you want to do this again? You know, and of course the answer given is going to be I, never if I could, you know, I, network refreshes can be a pain and expensive and, and you know, they, they want to make it last as long as possible. That's going to be the ultimate answer. I, I, I don't want to have this conversation in a year or two. I want to go as long as possible without having to redo this. And then you say, well, there you go. That's, that's why I'm telling you to, to, to take a look at Wi-Fi 7. It's not for the needs now, but it's for the future proof. So that way this network come three, five, seven, maybe even, you know, seven years from now, you're still, you still will likely be able to, to handle the traffic and, and, you know, uh, last you longer than going with this. It's kind of like buying a car, right? You're going to pay price if you're going to, a higher price if you're going to buy brand new. At least it was. I don't know about this uh, <laughs> car market now, but you know, uh, buying new is typically more expensive. But you buy new because if you're especially somebody who's like, well, I just want to buy one car and be have it last me as long as possible. Well, then great, buy brand new, and that car will should last you as long as possible. If you buy used with a car that has already a hundred thousand miles, is already you know ten years old, uh, you're not going to get as much traction out of it. And so that's what my say would be as far as the, the use cases. It's for the future, your future proofing, more devices and more speeds, faster things are connecting. I'd also maybe ask too about their growth. Hey, are you growing? Is this company growing? Are you expanding? And as you expand, you can anticipate more and more demand being put on the network. You're going to hire more employees. You're going to be maybe uh, expand a little bit into the building. You're going to, you know, there's going to be these things and these factors that as you're growing, you want your network to grow with you, a scalability. And that's what you tell them with Wi-Fi 7. Hey, Wi-Fi 7 allows you to be having the scalability that your business needs if you anticipate being to grow. I want to be able to encompass that growth between now and five years. And if you're growing, you know, 30% every year, then we've got to fact that in and, and let's, it'll help us not have this conversation as soon as, as uh, we, you know, get going with a Wi-Fi 6 solution. So great question. Thank you so much for that, Jordan. Next question here. A couple more to go, of course. Uh, here we go. How does Wi-Fi 7 handle simultaneous connections in a high demand environment? You know, how, I, I guess uh, the answer to that question, how, I mean, again, with that uh, uh, that new uh, feature that Wi-Fi 7 has, the channel bonding, the um, being able to take multiple bands and combine them into one where you can ride on uh, on all of those, a multi-link operation. Um, if you're asking me, of like, how does that work? Or, you know, that's, you know, that's a question for some software developers. That's kind of definitely above my... Uh, my my pay grade and my level of, of, of knowledge, but uh, just it does. It, it's able to take multiple devices and, and put them on the band. Now I will say too, um, it really helps if you have a Wi-Fi 7 chip, right? That Wi-Fi 7 chip. If you have a, a, a an iPhone 10, iPhone 11, or something like that, then uh, you know are, are these features really gonna? Are you really gonna feel these features? Uh, maybe not much, not as much as you could be. But as newer devices come on, they're gonna be definitely feeling those features of being able to. Uh, be able to bounce. So I hope that answers as best my ability. Absolutely. Thank you, Jordan. Appreciate that. Uh, next question here for you. Um, will all of your devices support Wi-Fi 7? I mean, I guess it determines when you say devices. Will all of our devices support Wi-Fi 7? Um, I guess I'm not uh, maybe not clear on what you mean. Usually, when you say devices, we're talking about uh, end user devices: cell phones, laptops, tablets, computers, things like that. Um, Wi-Fi 7. If you even if you don't have a Wi-Fi 7 device, 
devices can't and will still use Wi-Fi 7, yes, it's necessarily not necessarily Netgear's devices, but uh, personal devices or you know, uh, what we call uh, IOTs, if they are on Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi 7 will support those whether they have a Wi-Fi 7 chip in them or not. Thank you so much, Jordan. I realize that was a very wide and general question, but you zoned in and and uh, and clarified. I appreciate that so very much. Uh, and thank you for answering all of today's questions. And thank you to everyone for attending today. And if anyone has any further questions, please feel free to contact your sales rep or email us at sales at microcomtech.com. And if anyone wishes to view any of the products mentioned and shown here today, please remember this wife, this webinar presentation has been recorded and will be uploaded to our Microcom YouTube channel, YouTube channel, so we can all view it again. Thank you, Jordan. I appreciate it. Love hearing what's going on with Netgear. Until next time, and everybody have a fantastic day. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.